Hey everyone, Johnny here. About a year ago, I put together a video that was about creating a grid of objects that had random stepped rotations. This was done before the field system was added to geometry nodes. I've since gotten a request to update that particular tutorial using the field system now in Blender 3.2. So let's run through that. Here I've created just an arbitrary object that has a point on one end so we can keep track of its rotation very easily. I want a grid of these. So let's go ahead and add an instance on points node using our object as the instance and then using a mesh grid as the points. We'll go ahead and spread these out a little bit and add a few more in. There, now the question is, how do we rotate these? Well, since these are all instances of our original object, we can go ahead and use this rotation on our instance on points to drive their rotation. I'm going to drag this out and type in combine and choose combine vector. Now we need to decide which axis we want to spin these on. We can see here that our Z axis is facing towards us. So that's the axis we want to rotate on. Next, we wanted the rotation to be random. So we'll simply add a utilities random value node and plug it into the Z. So here we've got some random rotations and those rotations go from zero to one. Rotations in Blender use radians. So this is zero radians to one radian. Radians are the measure of the distance around a unit circle. So if I have a circle with a radius of one, we know that the circumference of this circle is equal to two times pi times r. So in this case, since r is one, the circumference is equal to 2 pi. So we can think about it this way. If we start walking along the circumference of this circle, starting here, we have 0. And as we walk this way, we start increasing. Well, pi is approximately 3.14. So as we approach this side of the circle, since the distance all the way around is 2 times pi, halfway around is equal to pi. And once we get all the way around, we get to 2 pi. That means that if we're one quarter of the way around, we're equal to one half of pi. And if we're on this side, we're at three halves of pi. These are the angles we want our arrows to face. Zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two. One way we can get this is by instead of using a float for our random value, we can use an integer. If we use an integer of zero to three, that will give us four distinct values, zero, one, two, and three. We can then multiply that against the distance of one quarter of our circle, which is pi over two. So I'll add a math node and set it to multiply. We can plug in our integer value into the top value. And then for our bottom value, we want pi over two. The easiest way to put pi over two in here is to actually type in the word pi, a forward slash, and a two. And you'll see that the calculation has already been done for us and we don't have to do the division ourselves. So now when our random integer is zero, the output of this multiply node will be zero. If it's one, it'll be two pi. If it's two, it'll be pi. If it's three, it'll be three pi over two. And those will be our four values. So if I plug this output into my Z rotation, you see we get the values we wanted. Now we could generalize this a little bit so that we could have any number of even rotations in here. Let's go ahead and add in an integer input. And we're gonna set this to four. Now to get this to go from zero to three, using four here, we could simply plug this into the max and subtract one from it. So now our maximum value will always be one less than the value we put in here. But what about this bottom value? Since this is pi over two, this is actually two pi divided by four. 
since we were dividing our unit circle into four even parts. So if we take this multiply node and turn it into a divide node, bring our integer down to this bottom value, and have the top value be two times pi, which is all the way around our circle, and then use that as our value here, this will work. So now if I change this to five, I'll get five distinct values, or six, or seven, and so forth and so on. Of course, if you wanted this to be generalized into a node, you could easily do that. If you grab all of these values and hit Control G, you'll group them together. We can get rid of this integer node and replace it with an input, and we'll call that angles. We might also want to drive the size of our grid. In this case, we'll keep it even. So we'll use the same value for our x and our y, and then the number of vertices will do the same. Up here, angles came in as a float, so we're going to change the angles input to an integer. We can control the number of angles that these will be pointing, we can control the size of the grid, and how many vertices are in that grid. So I hope this was useful to see how things have changed from the old system in versions of Blender before fields, and now doing it using the field system. As always, I hope this inspires you to make something awesome, and until next time, I'll catch you later.